This week we have Dr. Tetsushi Arai. He is the Associate Professor of Peacebuilding and Conflict Transformation at SIT Graduate Institute. And he's here to teach our Comparative Identity-Based Conflicts course. So thank you very much. Thank you. For your time. Um, so in as close to as an ideal society as we could possibly create, how would we construct and maintain a heterogeneous nation that would not experience uh, a violent clash of identities? Um, what specific actions, prescriptions would a nation, community uh, do to build a harmonious society comprised of various identities? I think in terms of the vision that your question is implying to look for, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it is a society that seeks diversity as a basis for social harmony. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a sense of the differences that do not get manipulated into a destruction of violence. The differences become the source of vitality for the individual uh, human beings as well as communities to be able to coexist, uh, dialogue about the differences, mm -hmm. uh, aging or growth. In a, in a very broad outline that I believe is a vision to search for. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was thinking myself when I asked this in my head, um, maybe uh, when you have in class you talk about you know, symbols and calendar being such important things that, that create a unified identity, um, how, how, well, how possible would it be to create a, a more humanistic calendar, for, for instance? Um, where all holidays are celebrated by everyone, you know, um, Christian, Muslim, um, several holidays, uh, a calendar that's, that's more humanistic. Um, it, it, would such a thing make, make a difference? And, and more like the, uh, the point about those symbols, uh, ceremonies, uh, stories uh, that become the hallmarks of cultural diversity, as well as sometimes cultural division, has to do with the awareness that those are all human constructs. So some of those human constructs come out of a deliberate human choice to use those constructs as tools to achieve certain goals. So those constructs become instruments. And those instruments can be manipulated those instruments can be used to uh, promote peace building. And the first step is to be conscious of the, the value and the mechanism of making those instruments. On the other hand, there are so many situations where we as individuals and community members are unaware that we are actually uh, shaped and reshaped by those constructs surrounding us. As natural as a language we speak. Uh, I think that's where the value of peace education comes. And as to your question of how and whether uh, peace-oriented constructs are possible, uh, I think the question uh, is to really ask what kind of dialogue would enable the respective communities to come up with whatever constructs they wish, with the full consciousness of their own local grounded theories of peace that then find expression in those constructs. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, celebrations uh, in some communities that actually value both Christianity and Islam, Hinduism and Islam, etc., etc. Those things are already uh, there. Mm -hmm. Only that in some societies whereby, let's say, the Hindu, Muslim, or Christian, Islam relationship is difficult, I think it is in those societies where those dialogues have to take place to intentionally construct those uh, things. Uh, for my own observation, we tend to see so many of monuments that celebrate war heroes, that soldiers holding guns. But we don't really see so many monuments uh, that symbolize mothers mm -hmm. holding babies. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Or maybe uh, children playing uh, 
uh, envisioning some sort of a future. And that has to do with the people who actually made, designed those monuments and funded the construction of those monuments. There's a political economy to it. And I think the first step is to talk about it. Uh, to what extent can we say that many conflicts considered to be identity-based conflicts are actually um, not so? so um, in so many cases, identity has been politicized and exploited to divide people. Um, but when we look deeper into a conflict, we see that the sources are based on competition over resources or fight for liberty. So, um, I mean, many conflicts, they, it's, it's on the surface, we see it's, it's identity, it's a clash of, um, I don't know, Kurds and Turks, for instance. But when we look deeper, it's, we see there's more, it's, it's not so much identity, but um, social, economic, political issues. I think any of the large-scale, deep-rooted historical conflicts are multifaceted. They are, have lots of cultural slash identity oriented elements. And they are that same set of conflicts have structural institutional elements. They are always intertwined. Uh, so uh, to me, identity-related uh, aspects may be either salient or dormant. Mm -hmm. They may occupy a central focus of attention at any given time of the conflict's life, life cycle, or they may become less visible. Mm -hmm. So uh, the term we use, identity-based conflicts, uh, has to be used in a very careful manner. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I think that moment we use such terms of, as identity-based conflicts, we depict an image that they are primarily, if not exclusively, about identity. Mm -hmm. When, as you said, that may not be so, especially when we do a very careful causal analysis, not just exacerbating factors to be analyzed. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so for that reason, uh, what I think we try to explore this week with the students is to bring the identity elements in the foreground of our attention while we pay a serious attention in the background all other issues from political, economic to anything else. Always reminding ourselves that in any theatrical orchestration there is a foreground and background. Both are important and intertwined. Without the foreground there is no background. There is no background. If there's no background, there's no foreground. Mm -hmm. In the debate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So still pay attention to the identities that are. Of course. It is in the interdependence of things. Mm -hmm. uh, holistically, uh, systemically, we understand conflict and do something about it. Um, and you have such a rich experience of training people all over the world. In your experience, what is the biggest misunderstanding about identity-based conflict? Um, or uh, another question that I ask, I could ask is, how must the field, how must the field of peace and conflict studies, better, de better develop uh, to address identity and conflict dynamics? Um, or what do you recommend students to students is essential to understand about conflict, um, uh, to understand about culture and identity if they want to make the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if I'm asked. Uh, what the biggest challenge or misunderstanding is uh, in the context of uh, training on COVID issues. Uh, it is very hard to point out one, but one typical thing that we see is definitely polarization. Uh, the simplification of weakness and dangerous. And this unfortunately is everywhere. And its roots may be traced to uh, deep human desire for survival, for one to survive and for one to see a perceived enemy. It is natural for life-affirming personal people mm -hmm. to want to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when doing so is perceived to be at the risk at the cost of somebody to be set aside, then that becomes a basis for weakness and dangerous. And the first step is to be self-conscious of those things happening. Mm -hmm. Now, awareness raising is a, 
is a very important way in which we can begin to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that then that leads to the beginning of an answer to your second question. Um, greater education, awareness, cultivation about those human dynamics that are quite typical and constant. So that there's a greater uh, a peace culture that is able to turn those perceived challenges as opportunities for knowing each other better. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to find the other currents of the tidal of water uh, so as to anchor our existence and coexistence in the other currents. Mm -hmm. So maybe those are some of the points. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time and for your, uh, your, courses, uh, your course this week. Thank you very much.